And you're just in time for Richard Mwenja exclusive. Your only point of call on matters political and governance analysis here in Kenya and across the region. It's such a distinct privilege to have you on board. Today, we are bringing the show from uh, the former minister, Kituto Arab Kiro's home here in Karen. And it's such a pleasure to host him one more time. How are you doing today, sir? It's my pleasure. I'm you're, happy. You are well? Very well, indeed. Sharp as always? I try. Uh -huh. Yes. The alternative? It's a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> that of the way so much is happening in the country, yes. the Waziri. Mm -hmm. And the reason development comes from the side of uh, majority leader in the National Assembly, Kimani Shungwa. Mm -hmm. He is firing warning shots to the president saying there's need for him to tame the rattlesnake in his hand. That rattlesnake is none other than Dipir Gavi Gashagwa. That there is need for him to be tamed as early as now before it grows too big. From your end as a seasoned uh, politician this country and leader, as well as a political analyst, mm -hmm. do you read some sense of wisdom behind uh, Kimani Shungwa's clarion call to the president? Well, uh, specifically, there is lack of wisdom in that particular statement, mm -hmm. given the fact that the ticket that we saw in 2002, mm -hmm. uh, 2022 sure. for Kenya Kwanzaa mm -hmm. was a ticket between uh, President Ruto and Regatta Gashagwa. Mm -hmm. That's the ticket that they gave Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And therefore, these bad manners of bringing some changes midstream mm -hmm. is something that is not going to nurture political uh, maturity mm -hmm. and is going to destroy mm -hmm. the political uh, situation that we have as a Kenya, uh -huh. as, as a country. Mm -hmm. This therefore means, um, I think Imani Shungwa had better engage in other things mm -hmm. than to engage on politics of trying to divide the, the, the essence of this nation. The presidency, uh, as per the real politic, is of course the president and other people. But in the constitution, the presidency includes the deputy president, and of necessity, the two in, the two offices must respect each other. Mm -hmm. The deputy president must respect the president, and the president of necessity must learn to tolerate his deputy. Mm -hmm. That's the only way we can say, as a nation, we are maturing uh, democratically. Otherwise, anything else is not something that we expect to happen. Uh -huh. In fact, many people are saying mm -hmm. this is degenerating to a situation where it is becoming like child play. Oh. The two offices should respect each other, mm -hmm. should have some modicum of respect, patience, and to realize that they are not there because of them. Mm -hmm. They are there because the people of Kenya chose that that was the ticket that they were going to present to us for the next five years. Oh, makes yeah. sense, makes sense. Yeah. And moving on swiftly with this conversation, Fukimani Shungwa, uh, quite a, a bright fellow, but by going bare knuckles on Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa, would you then say that perhaps he could be committing political suicide if he's not careful on how he's trading towards Rigathi Gashagwa? It will depend on what in, uh, will happen in the intervening period. Mm -hmm. If Rigathi Gashagwa is going to have gravitas around the mountain, mm -hmm. then uh, Kimani Shungwa can call it a day. Mm -hmm. But if Rigathi Gashagwa is going to be destroyed and will go down without a struggle, mm -hmm. then Kimani may, <coughs> may end up uh, having done uh, what we call the David and the Goliath. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the situation as it is today, mm -hmm. the deputy president mm -hmm. is present in the Mount Kenya region. There's uh -huh. nothing that can persuade me otherwise mm -hmm. because any political analysis uh -huh. indicates mm -hmm. that the two must learn to work together. Very well. And now we have seen uh, a section of Mount Kenya members of parliament uh, pledge allegiance to CS uh, for Interior, Kidure Kindiki, over 48 members of parliament across the board in Mount Kenya region. Now, Rigathi Gashago is only left with a paltry number of parliamentarians supporting his bid, future elective bids, and even his current position as the DP of this country. Would you then say that perhaps Rigathi Gashago might have lost a big chunk of his artillery and there is need for him to work on regaining other people across the country as early as now? Well, it is clear that uh, members of parliament, uh, mm -hmm. about 70% uh, of them don't come back. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the 48, uh, perhaps uh, 10 or 12 mm -hmm. will come back. The rest of them will be swept by the wayside. Mm -hmm. Number two, the most important issue, where are the people of the Mount Kenya region? Mm -hmm. Are they with Rigadi Gashagwa mm -hmm. or are they willing mm -hmm. to trade off for any other arrangement? This is a situation that we must all the time uh, keep in mind as we make political analysis of the situation. Uh -huh. 
And for you as a seasoned leader in this country, what then would be your nugget of wisdom to see us for interior Kidure Kindiki? Amidst all these alignments and realignments, much of, of, of which he is at the center of it, what would be your advice for Kidure Kindiki going forth? How should he uh, navigate his political uh, decisions or even governance decisions henceforth? I would just advise him that the mountain is rumbling mm -hmm. and is smoking mm -hmm. and is likely to spell a disaster for those in it and those associated with it mm -hmm. and even those who may be around watching the game. Mm -hmm. This therefore means that he should read carefully, he should allow this storm to wither before he makes any political statement <clears throat> because anything that he's going to make mm -hmm. is likely to spell doom for him mm -hmm. because the fire that is going to explode around the mountain uh -huh. is likely to consume a number of politicians. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Rightly said there, yeah. sir. And now for DP Gavi Gashagu continues to face a plethora of woes. For him, would you say that he should find solace in politics of sympathy, that maybe that one is going to elevate him a bit higher in his next bid, like it has happened for previous people from Mount Kenya, politics of sympathy sailing them into power? Well, in Kenya, it has happened that um, mm -hmm. people seek sympathy from the electorate. Mm -hmm. But at times, it may not translate into tangible votes. Mm -hmm. What I would advise him is that the marriage between him and the president is over. It is? It is over, totally over. What they should be doing is how are they going to share the proceeds from their previous arrangement. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it is over politically. Nothing can salvage the situation uh -huh. because there is bitterness on both sides. Mm -hmm. And this is something I advised even the team around the president, that him having the same character as Rigade Kashagwa will not last five years. Uh -huh. My prediction has come to pass. Uh -huh. Yeah, the two of them are people of the same character. Uh -huh. None of them is willing to bow down. Uh -huh. even, in any, in, even in normal marriage, uh -huh. one person must be able to tolerate the excesses of the other. Uh -huh. That's how marriages survive. It's not because people are good. Kukaa pamoja kwa sababu ya watoto. Ya, yeah, lakini watoto sasa wametoroka. Watoto ambao ni wa Kenya sasa wa murima. Wa, wale wa murima sijui kama bado wako. <laughs> lakini najua wengi wako na regard kashagwa. All right. Yeah. All right. That's position. Fair enough. When President Ruto uh, was ascending into power, there is one thing he pledged that he won't at any point take a paradigm shift from his deputy and maybe have the same moves that befell him during Kenyatta's tenure. Mm -hmm come and haunt his current deeper Gadi Gashagwa. Would you say that the president was insincere about that particular pledge? Well, how many promises has he made? Mm -hmm. He continues to make new promises. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when I was listening to that particular speech mm -hmm. during his inaugural address at Kasarani, mm -hmm. I knew, I took it with a pinch of salt. Mm -hmm. I knew the two of them are people of the same character and none is willing to budge. And therefore, he is in keeping with making promises that don't exist, including the jobs in Germany that the German government has refuted, mm -hmm. and many other pledges he has made. Many studies that were supposed to be completed okay. by, by almost four years ago, they are yet to be completed. But maybe the fault comes from his communication team who can't clearly communicate his, even his agreement with Germany. Well, the issue is simple. <laughs> advice as good as the recipient of that advice. Mm -hmm. Communication team receives information from him mm -hmm. and they pass the information that the boss has cleared. Uh -huh. And therefore they have been communicating to us the thinking of the president. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to understand something about Mount Kenya politics. At one point, Ndindi Nyoro uh, was perceived by many to be that artillery that the president uses to tame down any of his opponents, be it Rigadi Gashago or any other factor in Mount Kenya. Right now, amidst the, 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 the reef between Ndindi Nyoro, Kimani Ishungwa and others, I mean between Kimani Ishungwa, Dipi Gashago and others, Ndindi Nyoro is maintaining pin drop silence. Why is this man all of a sudden turning into a political gentleman when many, a few months ago he was that person to be deployed to attack anyone going after the president of Kenya, Kwanza? Uh, there are two possible reasons. Mm -hmm. One, Ndindi Nyoro may be finding futile an exercise to engage in the current uh, scale of things. Mm -hmm. That would be one reason. Mm -hmm. The other reason would actually be, perhaps, he's been told to be the good uh, Askari, mm -hmm. so that as Kimani Shunga does the attack, mm -hmm. he becomes a good fellow, mm -hmm. so that there is still an alternative around the mountain. Uh -huh. uh, but the, what is informing all this mm -hmm. is that the president realizes the mountain is slipping away mm -hmm. from his uh, grabs. Mm -hmm and therefore possibly wants to create enough turbulence mm -hmm. to make sure 
that there are those who are seen to be better and those who are seen to be bad and therefore they must be decimated. And any decimation of a political player is a dangerous game, including the possibility of trying to do an impeachment on Regade Gashagwa. Mm -hmm. That might backfire and create uh, a situation mm -hmm. where the president might find himself in a very awkward position. Uh -huh. yeah. Rightly put, Sam. And uh, now shifting gears, let's talk about the future of Regadi Gashago in the political arena, more particularly the, he, maybe his bid in 2027 or 2032. For him to solidify his uh, element in regional politics and national politics, would you say that by tapping into the potential of Kalonzo Msioka and looking at how we can leverage on him so that they can uh, achieve shared goals and visions, that that will be now creating a mountain high enough for not anyone to flatten beat Raila Odinga or even President William Ruto? Well, he has a number of options. Uh -huh. uh, one of the options is to run on his own uh -huh. and therefore create a situation where we may, we may go for a runoff. Uh -huh. And in the runoff, there's that possibility that it could be one of the top two who will call upon another person to form the coalition post-election mm -hmm. for purposes of dealing with the runoff. Mm -hmm. The second possibility is to support somebody else from a different section of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Perhaps Kalonzo Mishoka may be that candidate. Mm -hmm. And with that kind of combination, it creates a situation where there is negotiated democratic principles mm -hmm. for the 2032. Mm -hmm. Perhaps Kalonzo may run for one term and uh, allow him to run 2032. The third option is possibly to throw in the towel and retire because and that is an option that I don't think is going to take it because it will spell a disaster for him. More important, the mountain is yearning for some kind of leadership that will take them to the next phase of national development. Uh -huh. yeah. It is said that a wise cat never eats a pregnant uh, rat. Mm -hmm. When it comes to Kenya's political uh, landscape, between Rigadi Gashagwa and CS Interior, Kithure Kindiki, who many are now endorsing as their nexus or link to the government, whom do you think between the two is that pregnant rat that if you are shit with, you are likely to reap much more in the near future? Well, on the scale of things, but politics can change. As they say, one day in politics, it could, could be uh, like a century. Mm -hmm. So things can change, but as it is now, mm -hmm. Kithure had better shy away from this kind of controversy. Mm -hmm. He stands no chance of, of ripping anything. In fact, the battle is between the president and his deputy. Mm -hmm. Anybody else trying to pretend that they can be part of is just creating a problem for themselves. Uh -huh. That is a position that I see mm -hmm. and is the most logical position, given the fact that the Mount Kenya region has realized mm -hmm. that the deal they were promised has never come. Uh -huh. And it's not likely to come. I see. And the discontent that is there possibly has something to do with the performance of the two. Mm -hmm. But one of them mm -hmm. has played the victim and successfully so. Uh -huh. This therefore means at the end of the day, uh -huh. we need to look at this space and realize that the, the realignment that took place in the last election mm -hmm. is likely to change. Uh -huh. Just like the last five general elections, uh, every election as a new political formation, uh -huh. whether as a coalition uh -huh. or political parties, uh -huh. and people move from one side of the divide to the other side in the intervening period before the next general election. I see. It's a situation that we still have as a country uh -huh. because we are still maturing in uh -huh. terms of democratic principles and institutions of democracy. Uh -huh. I see. And now for prominent figures from Mount Kenya region, uh, case in point, Martha Karua, Her Excellency, we're talking about Jeremiah Kioni and a few other figures. Would you advise them now to gravitate towards Rigadi Gashagwa or, or, or yours would be that maybe they should go the Kindiki way? How would you advise Martha Karua and other prominent figures in Mount Kenya? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, the Kindiki option is not there because the Kindiki is in government. Mm -hmm. Rigadi Gashagwa is in government on his way out. Mm -hmm perhaps to another government <laughs> or to the opposition. Mm -hmm. So I would rather we do consultation. Or to political oblivion, if he's not when careful. I, 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 I think he has the enough wisdom, <laughs> energy, mm -hmm. and wit mm -hmm. to make sure that he does not go to the cliff mm -hmm. uh, for him to be visited with certain demons mm -hmm. that visited some people in 2013. Mm -hmm. So my, my take and my advice to anybody coming from the mountain mm -hmm. is to tread carefully but have 
some active conversation mm -hmm. with the possibility of trying to get some robust discussion mm -hmm. around the next political dispensation for the mountain and the rest of the country. Uh -huh. yeah. Lastly, Sand, in the interest of time, many are curious to understand. You've been here in, Pol in Kenya's political arena for over three decades, and you've seen, the, seen it all and see them all. There are those who believe that Kimani Ishungwa is grooming himself to be a psychophant by excellence. <laughs> the latter day, Kariuki Chotara, Mulu Mutisia, you name them. Yeah. Would you say that maybe Kimani Ishungwa is on that journey of becoming a political psychophant? Well, I think he's suffering from what, from what I call political naivety. <laughs> Political naivety creates a situation where you are made to believe you are so powerful mm -hmm. until your balloon is flattened. Mm -hmm. This therefore means Kimani Shumwa <laughs> is playing with a balloon that mm -hmm. it does not know the content mm -hmm. and the structure and the material uh, in which it is made. The balloon could be, pr could be pricked at some Anybody point? Anybody can prick it and it will come down rumbling. And therefore, he should be careful. But maybe he'll take solace by coming to open arms of President Ruto because he's been his loyal lieutenant this far. Well, he should realize that uh, he does not keep friends. His boss does not keep friends. It is about political expediency, nothing more than that. A How many friends has he dropped by the wayside? He, he's betrayed those who were there for him when he was in need? Either betrayal or uh, <laughs> just moving to new political conveniences as he scales the ladder of success. And this therefore means, if Rigade became more useful to him, he will dump Kimani and embrace Rigade. So you foresee a situation whereby for Kimani Ishungu at some point, he'll be that proverbial monkey mm -hmm. that finds all three slippery on his material day to die. They have started slipping away and they have started getting slippery. <laughs> Can he tell us which, <laughs> which rally did he hold in his own constituency the last time? He goes to Nakuru, makes very strong statements mm -hmm. under the pulpit, uh -huh. and uh, therefore comes to Nairobi uh -huh. with the hope that uh, he's going to be relevant. Uh -huh. One day he will be asked, who appointed you? Uh -huh. Not members of parliament. Uh -huh. It is the president who appointed him. Well, that point by former minister Kipruto Arab Kiro takes us to the wrap of today's conversation, discussing a, a raft of issues in the world of politics and governance, touching on the future of Mount Kenya region, the future of CS for Interior Kidure Kindiki, the future for President Ruto in his, uh, with his governance style this far, and also what all this means for the electorate and the nation at large. How about we now cross over to this insightful segment that you all have embraced so quick, that is Hero's Corner with Honorable Kipruto Arab Kiro. Today, Waziri, yes. who graces our segment as our hero or heroine for the day? Mass teacher uh -huh. in Mangwai School 46 years ago. 46 years ago? Yes. All right. That is uh, Ruth Kinyanjui. Madam Ruth Kinyanjui. Kinyanjui. Uh -huh. She was my teacher 1977 and 78 from one and from two. Uh -huh. She laid the foundation uh, on which I was able to build my career as a politician, uh -huh. as somebody who deals with logic uh -huh. and uh, created a number of things that has made me, have made me mm -hmm. what I am today. Uh -huh. I had the privilege of visiting her last Saturday mm -hmm. in her own house in Thika, mm -hmm. and I met her with friends. Oh, three of us went. Uh -huh. yeah, Washira, Njoroge, mm -hmm. uh, Omar Juma, and I. Mm -hmm. And we met her with uh, our children. Many of them have graduated from various institutions, mm -hmm. engineering, mm -hmm. medicine, mm -hmm. and many other professions. <laughs> She's now in her 80s, and she's doing very well. We thank God for her. She still has the energy within her? Yes. And she remembers you all? She remembered us. And I sent you one of the clips for you to be able to, <laughs> to enjoy and realize that I speak what I do. That was so good of you. It was good, and it was really nostalgic, even <laughs> the fact that um, this is somebody we last saw in, uh, about 40-something um, years ago. Uh -huh. And uh, we were told she retired, retired in the year 2002. <laughs> she with her family. And we're happy. Our children are doing well. So many prominent figures have gone through her hands. Many of us. And so she's proud of it this far? She's so proud of it. 
and she's happy. She told us next time we go, mm -hmm. we should go with our, our families mm -hmm. so that we are one large family of Kenya <laughs> uh, people. And many of, of our students mm -hmm. ended up doing engineering, mm -hmm. doing accounts, and some of us went to politics having done something in teaching mm -hmm. and in agriculture. Mm -hmm. And many of them mm -hmm. are successful professionals in different fields of development. Mm -hmm. I thank her, I appreciate her, mm -hmm. I celebrate her, mm -hmm. and I wish her good health and long life for us to be able to enjoy. Indeed. Thank you. Indeed. Amen. Thank you so much, Madam Ruth Kinyanjui. Yes. And you also thank your family for being so gracious and kind to our old man here, Kipito Rap Kiroa, <laughs> and the many students that went through your hands. We really applaud the efforts that you teachers do in churning out yes. better citizens, better human beings for this universe, not just for Kenya. We say asante sana to how? Yeah. You should, yeah. You should actually bring her on the show next time. Next time we'll do, but you see what you're saying, you are calling me an old man. He was, she was calling us Vijana. <laughs> all right. So you're looking at me as an old man, but she looks at us as the young boys I was able to mentor. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank Asante you. Asante Sana. Thank yeah. you so much for your insights, Agui. Yeah, it's my pleasure too. All right. Asante. We understand that you're also growing old. Tomorrow is your birthday. We wait to see oh, what yeah. you have in store for us. Uh, a lot of things. A lot of things. Um, much of it is prayers for you people All right. to reach where we have reached uh -huh. and even do better than us. All right. Yeah. Asante sana. This is where I take the show to a wrap. Keep us uh, engaged on our social media handles. I'm at Mwenja Richard on X and on TikTok as well. Let me know which areas you'd wish me to cover on next time. And also let's get your feedback about this particular edition. Until we meet next time, enjoy the rest of your viewing.